Hello there, welcome back. In this video lecture, we'll see what is in uh, Spark UDF and uh, what are the steps in creating Spark UDF. Let me uh, just quickly create a uh, scale object. And let me just copy the boilerplate code. Okay, I have entered main method. And I've added the boilerplate code. Okay, uh, so what is Spark UDF? Spark UDF is nothing but a user defined function uh, where a user want to implement certain function which is not available out of the box from Spark uh, uh, Spark functions. Like for example, uh, we have uh, we have seen what uh, functions which are uh, uh, available from Spark SQL like min max or uh, date functions or uh, string functions or aggregate functions, many functions which are available, right? Uh, so if none of these functions fits your use case and you want to uh, have a new implementation of your function then uh, that's when the UDF comes into picture right uh, to create an UDF uh, uh, it's just straightforward uh, uh, let me just uh, try to give a basic example of the UDF suppose I want to convert a, a string from a lower case to upper case uh, this I, I don't want to use the existing uh, uh, spark inbuilt, inbuilt lower function uh, lower case function or something like that I want to create my own or I want to implement my own uh, lower case function so let me just uh, create a function like uh, which takes a string and uh, which uh, returns a string what it does it takes a string and it converts the string into lower case right so this is my function so my function is uh, available now so to convert this function into a UDF function, you have to write a lambda function or anonymous function in Scala. To do that, uh, just have to do to lower. I'll just give an extension called uh, UDF. Uh, to keep the things uh, tidier, I'll use this notation. Uh, to lower is the actual method and to lower UDF is the UDF method which will be passed for the Spark SQL or uh, which will be passed to the Spark. Now uh, to use the UDF, I just have to use the UDF method which is available and I have to make within the square brackets, I have to mention uh, the return type of the function and uh, uh, the uh, ty data types of the functions or data types of the parameters which are passed to the function. For example, the return type of my function over here is a string. So the first uh, thing it will go as a string, the first uh, parameter. And the second thing, uh, or from the second parameter, you'll, you'll have to pass what are the, what are the types of the parameters which you are passing to your function. For my function, there is only one parameter which I'm passing and it is of, uh, it is of type string. So I'll just give it. Now, uh, I have to, uh, these are the input parameters to my UDF. And when this UDF is called, it has to invoke this particular function, which is to lawyer. To invoke that function, I have to give this function within this parenthesis, right? This is how uh, you use it. But still, you can see that Eclipse is uh, complaining. Uh, this is because uh, for UDF, you have to add an import statement, uh, which is again available in Spark SQL functions dot UDF, right? Here, uh, this UDF, what it does, uh, it takes it's building the job uh, it takes uh, a udf uh, function uh, which will have uh, uh, two uh, two uh, two things two sets of things available one is uh, data types of the return type and the parameters which are passed to the function and actual function right so first we have to de define a function and this function we have to convert into udf by using udf method which is available in apache spark right uh, now I have made this function also uh, made this function UDF. Now to call this UDF uh, in our in my job I have to use something called stocks dot uh, same thing select and uh, instead of uh, columns what I can give uh, stocks of I'll just give the string name uh, earlier what we have seen um, I'm converting from a, a uppercase to the lowercase so I'll just go with symbol. I'll give the symbol to pass this UDF 
what I have to do, I'll have to give this UDF like this. It's almost similar, uh, the, the way we call this UDF is almost similar to the way we call the built-in functions. But uh, the, the, the functionality is uh, like the main difference comes with uh, how you define the function and how you convert the function to UDF. These two are the important, important steps uh, in converting the UDF, into, uh, in converting a normal uh, function into a UDF and using that UDF into our uh, uh, job. So the first thing would be uh, define a function and uh, so, okay and the second thing would be convert the function into convert the function into UDF and now use the con UDF use UDF with Spark data frame or data set right these are the three different uh, steps which we have to follow when we are creating the UDF right now I have uh, created the UDF let me just uh, run the job and uh, show you how this executes uh, for this I am just using this uh, tool lawyer right but I have to give an action my action here would be show right uh, to show the difference here you can see all the symbol uh, uh, things which we have or in uppercase which I will be converting into lowercase so let me just quickly run the job now you can see that our job is failed uh, the reason our job is failed is because we are running this uh, uh, job or we are running this uh, job in the yarn mode and uh, we don't have any serialization specified to this uh, uh, method uh, so that's the reason it is failing uh, so to make it simpler if you if you build this uh, 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 if, if you build this uh, uh, application or if you build this project into your jar file and uh, run it over the cluster uh, this job would run absolutely fine uh, but building the jar file and uh, uh, running it over the cluster uh, I'll, I'll show you in the coming uh, video lectures but for now you can run this in a local mode uh, in this local mode uh, you don't have to uh, worry about the this serialization part because uh, everything would be executing in our in your driver itself so uh, it will run straightforward but for now to fix this ex uh, issue I'm converting this uh, uh, master to local and I'm running this uh, UDF again or uh, this job again this time it should run uh, uh, fine and and uh, now you can see the job is completed successfully right uh, so these are the steps on in creating the UDF as explained earlier we got the error in our uh, previous run because we were running it uh, we were running the job in uh, yarn mode but we are we were running from Eclipse uh, when we are running a job from Eclipse uh, there will be some uh, problem with the serialization because the function which we have run it uh, it doesn't have the serialization part that's why it got failed so to fix the issue we have uh, converted uh, the master into the yarn uh, from yarn to local but the same thing uh, it will run in the yarn mode when you are running in uh, uh, the same thing when you uh, run in yarn mode uh, and when you build a jar file and run it on the cluster it will run absolutely fine there is no issue with uh, there will not be any issue with that I'll, I'll show the I'll show you how to build a jar file and uh, run it on the cluster with different options like uh, number of executors or number of executor cores to give and how much memory you have to give uh, those kind of stuff I'll explain in the coming videos uh, uh, stay tuned for that guys and uh, for now uh, for this video we have seen uh, how to uh, create a function and convert the function into an UDF and how to call the UDF uh, uh, within our spark application right guys uh, so this is a basic uh, implication of the spark uh, UDF right you can write any any kind of uh, uh, function uh, which is applicable or which is specific to your uh, use case and you can uh, 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 register or you, you can use that uh, UDF uh, along with uh, spark by converting the function into the UDF and you can use it with the spark this is one way of uh, creating the UDF and uh, 
uh, and uh, uh, running the UDF or using the UDF in Spark application. Uh, there is another way of uh, creating a, UC, a UDF uh, within uh, SQL query. You can uh, use it, which I'll be uh, showing you in the coming video lecture. Okay, guys, uh, that's it for this video lecture, guys. And uh, uh, if you have liked this uh, video, uh, please do uh, give a thumbs up. And uh, if you are new to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel. And uh, see you in the next uh, video. Bye, guys.